Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for watching today. Um, I figured I'd start off with another confession. Um, I was at the quick shop yesterday here in Elkhorn, and I saw someone I hadn't seen in a very long time. And we walked up to each other, and we kind of did the almost hug thing, and then we stopped, and then the almost shake, and then we stopped. And then you're like, you know what? We looked around. Let's just do it anyways. And so I hugged a guy. I'm sorry for people who are watching. Um, I think I'm going to be okay. Um, But if you don't know me, my name is Jimmy, and I'm one of the pastors here at Relevant. I want to say welcome to those joining online today for the very first time. So glad you're here. Um, Something that um, you may or may not know about me is that I do not like parades. Um, I absolutely just hate parades because you sit on the sideline and you just watch a bunch of people drive by. But I was able to attend a parade earlier this week that was fantastic because that parade was you. Uh, We stood as a paid staff in lines and just watched our church drive by and throw the hands out. We had a couple people throw candy out, so that was pretty awesome. I caught all of that. Uh, But the parade was the best one that I've ever been to, and so thank you for taking time um, to make it through that. You guys are so awesome. We even had a couple of parking lot tea life groups that happened last week after the parade. I want to call them uh, maybe trunk or tea life. Uh, People were in a circle, trunks open, people sitting in the back. And so one guy got locked in his trunk. Didn't really happen. Um, But many have asked me during that parade, so how is it preaching to an empty room? And I will say this. It still is strange, and it still is weird, and so I have to imagine a bunch of people sitting in this room, um, so when I'm looking at you right now, I'm just pretending like you all are here with me, and so, uh, but it's weird, and, but I'm encouraged, I'm encouraged by you, and so uh, I just want you guys to give yourself some online love right now, hit that heart, I think if you tap it a bunch of times, it just shows everybody how much you love each other. Uh, my son got a hold of my phone last week and did the same thing, and so it was kind of fun to watch that. But we are in our fourth and final week of our series called Ignite. And during this series, we are talking about how to share our faith with others. And if you came through that amazing parade last week, we handed out a two-sided card. Um, On one side, it says impact list. And on the other side, it's just kind of a note card that we created just for this uh, specific series. But if you want to go ahead and pull that out, if you didn't get one or you weren't able to make it, uh, Pastor John or whoever's moderating online will be able to post that link for you and you can print that out and follow along. But go ahead and pull that out. I want to give a quick recap to where we've been up to this point. So four ways that you can ignite the faith in others. In week one, we talked about my story or your story because your story can ignite the faith in others. And your story is probably the greatest tool that you have in your your tool belt to share your faith with others. This is your transformation story. What has God done in your life? What What was your life like before Christ? And when did you meet Christ? And what has your life been like afterwards? But that was week one, my story. So you can write that on that first line there. In the second week, we talked about how my response, this is your response, but my response can ignite the faith in others. No matter what is happening in our life, no matter what is happening in the world today, that your response to that can ignite the faith in others because people watch you, people watch us. They wanna see these guys, do they act a little bit different? And Ronnie talked about how to respond to fear with courage, and courage is contagious, and courage ignites faith. So that was week two. In week three, this is last week, we talked about how my readiness can ignite the faith in others. Your readiness can ignite the faith in others. And we defined how to be ready by saying you're where God wants you to be, and you're aware of who God wants you to invest in, and you're prepared to share your faith at any time. And so if you've missed any of those weeks, we do put those online. You can watch them anytime you want to. Some of us have more free time now than we used to. But that leads us to where we are today. And the topic today is the same, but I've changed it up because every day that we wake up, the world is a little bit different. And so the topic is the same, but to close out our series today, the fourth way to ignite your faith, to ignite the faith in others, is through your invitation. So write, my invitation on line four. My invitation can ignite the faith in someone else. Maybe it's simply because you invited them into something. Ronnie talked about that a few minutes ago. Maybe that's by inviting them to come to church with you on Sunday, or right now, in the current circumstance, inviting people to stream this message with you. You might have invited them into your Tea Life group. I know there are people joining Tea Life groups even now online, and it's easier because now we got some people in different parts of the country who are joining us online through Tea Life groups. 
Maybe you're inviting them through dinner or coffee to get to know them a little bit more, but that conversation that you have with them can ignite their faith. But that simple invitation could lead to something greater and potentially change someone's life, especially now. We all know that we're living through some very uncertain times, but during this time, I believe that God is calling his people everywhere to rise up and pray. I believe that wholeheartedly because I believe that God is calling more and more people to himself. He's calling people to come back to himself. Maybe you've drifted away for a while. It's time that you come back. But people now, more than ever, are more more open to God, but they just need to know how to get there. And that can take place through your sinful invitation. But as we get started today, I do want to start off with a little bit of encouragement because a lot of things have happened this week and we don't know what next week, next week looks like and so it's good that we stop for a moment and spend some time on some encouragement because every day is new. States are shutting down. But things are going to be okay. But I've felt during this time God stirring some things around in my heart and I want to share that with you today because he's been reminding me about who he is no matter what. He's been reminding me of his grace and he's reminding me of his goodness and his love, and of his hope. And I believe that he wants to do the same thing for everybody watching today. And if you're streaming our service for the very first time, I believe that this is for you too. This is for you too. And to let you know about us, we're not a perfect church. We're not a perfect people. We don't have all the answers. We don't know what tomorrow brings. But we are with you, and we are for you because God is for you. And I invite you to explore what God has in store for you during this time because that's what we're doing as well. That's what we continue to do week after week. See what, God, what do you have for me today? And so today's message is simple. The first thing that God's been stirring within my heart is that we need to stay close. Stay close. Now I know that's pretty tough right now. It's very, um, it's hard not to go and hug people and shake their hands and, and not want to go into everybody's houses and continue those relationships that way, but it, it's important that right now when we're physical distancing that we continue to stay close. And here's why. Because the writer of Hebrews says, and let us consider, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. You guys, we're figuring this out. And we're going to continue to figure this out. I'm not scared about what's happening with churches throughout the United States and around the world. Not scared about it. But we're figuring this out. And just like Ronnie said a few minutes ago, you guys are also figuring this out. You're figuring this out. We're smart people. You are smart people. We, had, we have Zoom going on. We have group me text. You guys are awesome. We've had that parking lot family going on. But let us consider and continue to consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting as we have before and some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging, this is the key word, encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Now day is in capital because it means the day, the the judgment day, but I believe that this is for even now, that we continue to encourage one another all the more because we're living through difficult times and we need this. And the devil wants nothing more than to use this time right now to lead people to everything that he is all about. And that's deeper isolation, depression, anxiety and fear and loneliness. And it's affecting us in ways that we would have never thought possible. It's affecting my home in ways that I never thought possible. But it's affecting us now, and it's more, now, it's more important now than ever that we stay close and that we encourage, that we encourage, and that we encourage. Because what happens when someone encourages you? How do you feel? If you get that phone call out of nowhere, you get a text from somebody, what happens? It lightens your spirit. It lightens my spirit. Seeing people that you know randomly on the street, they're like, I know you. It lightens your spirit. Calling that person, it just lightens our spirit and encourages us, and we just want to keep going. And so, church, we continue to call on you right now to stay connected, stay close to your small group members, check on them, check in on those from your team members, continue to check in on those that you haven't heard from. And let me just say this. If somebody pops into your mind randomly, I'm going to say that that's probably the Holy Spirit prompting you to reach out to that person. 
It's always been the truth in the past when someone's popped into my mind. I'll call them, I'll text them, and they're like, you'd never understand how much that meant to me right now. But we stay close. There's sometimes when I'm reading through my Bible and a passage, maybe I'm spending some time in a passage and someone pops into my mind. And I thought, God, this is probably you. So I pray for the person and I either call them, text them, email them and say, hey, I was reading in the Bible this morning or this evening and you popped into my mind with this passage. Just want to share that with you, invite you in to see what God has for that. Um, But those are some of the things that we can do to continue to stay close and encourage one another. Because hearing that voice of people, it's great reading things on a text, but hearing that voice from people brings encouragement. But I also want to uh, say to stay close to those in your circle of influence right now. On the back of that card, you'll see that there are people's names that you can write down that you can be, be praying for, but you can also be encouraging them and staying close to them right now. Those people that you're getting your food from in the drive-thru, they need encouragement. Those people that you live by, your neighbors, they need encouragement too. My family started up a group me for our street. Just started inviting everybody to it. Most people don't, I mean, a lot of people don't like group texts, but everyone's joining that thing and there's a lot of conversation happening and we just, we're feeling the love on our street, but we're staying close to them and investing in them and they're investing in us and, and everyone's interacting with each other like we never had before. So the opportunity is ripe right now. But think about how can you love them and how can you care for them and how can you encourage them and how can you invite them into conversations. But stay close and spur one another on toward love and good deeds. The second thing that God's been stirring in my heart right now is that we need to give hope. I heard this term from another friend of mine, but we need to give hope and continue to give hope because our city and those around us need us right now. People all around us need us right now. We need each other. People think the sky is falling. People do. They think the sky is falling and that the world is ending. And we are currently living through this global pandemic. And it's not just the disease itself that makes this a a global pandemic, but it's how people, the world, is responding to us. And I'll say this, that the news, the media, is not serving people well right now. And hopefully you've figured out that they just kind of twist things around anyways, but they're stirring people into panic and fear, and people are beginning to blame other people for this whole thing, and pointing fingers, and telling lies, and spreading false news. They're creating false news, and spreading that around social media, and people are became, getting more and more angry, and more scared. But here's the thing. We have to give hope, because people need to know that it's going to be just fine. I woke up this morning with so much joy, knowing, you know what, there's a lot of empty chairs in this building There's a lot of people sitting watching this right now all over the world. There's people who are worshiping Jesus like they never have before. But everything is going to be okay. So we give hope. And now I realize that maybe some of you watching, maybe you've tuned in today because you need some hope. And so I want to give you some hope right now. Maybe you're thinking, yeah, I need some hope right now. It's hard to give it because I don't have a whole lot of hope right now. And I want to do that for you today. I want to give some hope and encouragement to those of you, specifically the ones who can't see past tomorrow, or maybe they're worrying a lot and they're losing sleep. This world's going to look differently for a while, but we're all going to get through this, and here's why. I promise, because he has, he will, he will continue. He has, he will, he will continue. What are you talking about, Jimmy? What does that mean? Who, who's this person? I'm talking about God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians that he has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us, and on him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. You know, Paul wrote this passage uh, when he was feeling down and really discouraged and depressed and almost to the point of suicide in a terrible mindset. And he probably wanted to go to sleep and just cave in under all this stuff, under the stress of what's happening in his life. And I know it can be the same for us right now. There were times over the last couple of weeks when I was a little bit down and discouraged and depressed and just kind of really starting to let worry take over and let my faith turn into fear. And, and, and we start thinking about our finances and our job security. I don't know what it looks like for you. But let me just tell you that he has, he will he will continue. Now, right now, wherever you are, I want you to say this with me because saying things helps it go into your mind. He has, 
right where you're at. He will, he will continue. Say it again. He has, he will, he will continue. If you start getting yourself anxious, become fearful, you lost your job, on the brink of losing your job, he has, he will, and he will continue. That's the hope that we have. But here's something else. Paul says, and we know that in all things, even in times like right now, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to all these things? When your fears start creeping in, when you start to feel insecure, when you begin to think that you're on your own and that nobody's looking out for you, what do we say? Well, here's what I'm going to say. Not today, Satan. It's a t-shirt. Not today, Satan. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how, he will, not, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all these things? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, shall hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We're not simply conquerors. We're not just going to defeat this, but we're more than conquerors. If you're in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. Church, if you are more than conquerors, it's because of him who loves you, who sees you, who knows you, and who hasn't forgotten about you. Because God's got this, and God is good. Paul continues, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present or future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wherever you're listening from right now, he has, I want you to receive this, he has, he will, he will continue. So I want you to receive that hope. I want to give that hope, and that's the hope that we give. That's the hope that the world needs right now from us. And so grab someone's face, metaphorically speaking right now, but grab their face and give them some hope through love and friendship, groceries, paying someone's bills. Give them some hope, especially through words and invite people into those conversations because right now their hearts are ready. Now the third thing that God's been stirring in my heart is this, and I believe that this is the most important thing that we can do right now as a church and continue to do, and that is this, that we go to God. We stay close, we give hope, and we go to God in all things. You know, something that I've noticed during this time that we're in is that there's people that are tired and they're worn out and they're carrying more burdens than they've ever had before, which is strange because we're all being told to stay home, but now that's making us more tired. I never knew that sitting on the couch would make me so tired, but it does. But I think about all the people who are on the front lines in the medical fields and the people that are just kind of governing this whole nation and the world right now. I think about them. So thankful for you all. And we pray for you often. But I think about everyone at home because your life has also been turned upside down and you're tired and you're worn out and you're weary and you're carrying these burdens that you never thought you would ever need to carry. And some of us have the fear of the future and we're scared for the now and are hopeless. we have hopelessness and are, we're full of heartache. Now think about the ones who don't know God, who don't have that hope in God. I wonder what kind of burden they're carrying. But our spirits are heavy and in all these things, to all people everywhere in every nation, for those of you who are looking for God right now, Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. Words from Jesus, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened and I will give you, what's that last word? Rest. Rest for your souls, rest for your spirits, rest for your minds and your hearts. To the tired, to the broken, to the burdened, to the fearful, and the anxious, and to the suffering, come to me. These are Jesus' words, come to me, and I will give you rest. And we do that in two simple ways. Two simple ways. The first way is through prayer. 
And prayer is simply talking to God wherever you are. It doesn't have to be difficult. It's really easy. I do it in my car. I do it in the morning. I do it when I'm trying to brush my teeth. It's kind of hard to talk to God and brush your teeth at the same time, but we do it there too. But prayer is where we express our doubts and our fears and anxieties. We present everything before him. God, this is how I'm feeling. I don't know how to get over this. This is how I'm feeling. I just lost my job. This is how I'm feeling. Prayer is simply talking to God. It doesn't have to take forever either. There's no perfect way to pray. But tell him what's on your heart. And here is why we pray. The psalmist wrote, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. And the best part, he freed me from all my fears. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me and he freed me from all my, insert whatever it is that you're dealing with right now. What's causing you trouble within your spirit? You go to God with that. Now, if you have been doing that, you've got a great prayer life. Continue to pray. Pray hard. Just keep, keep praying. If you've never done that, you can start that today. Just go to God. Tell him what's on your heart. Hey, God, it's me. This is kind of things that I'm feeling. And that's going to grow. It's going to grow. But continue to do that. It's very simple. But in every situation, we go to God in prayer because he answers us and frees us from all of our fears and everything that we're dealing with. You know, sometimes you have to go to God in prayer for someone else or on someone else's behalf because maybe they can't pray. They're not, they don't have the strength to do that. I've asked other people to pray for me before in the past because I just didn't have the strength. We can do that for people. But go to God in prayer and watch what he frees you from. The second way, another easy way that we go to God is through his word, the Bible. Because his word is full of truth and his word is full of promises And his word is full of comfort and peace. And his word renews our minds and it restores us and reminds us that he loves us and will continue to take care of us. Because we can either fill our minds with fear and doubt by watching the news and reading these terrible articles, or we can fill our mind with truth of God's word in scripture. But when we go to God through reading the Bible, our insecurity becomes security. Our hopelessness becomes hopefulness. Our fear becomes faith. Our lost becomes found. And going to God through prayer and through his word brings comfort and direction and peace and hope. Trust me in this. Go to God through reading scripture because it will bring you those things. Another Psalm, chapter 119 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I was thinking the other day, what happens when you, it's three in the morning, and you're awake for some reason, and you hear a noise, and there's no lights on, what happens? A little bit of fear, what was that? Some of you guys push the husband out of the bed, some husbands push the wife out of the bed to go check on it. I'm not gonna tell you which one it is in my house, but what do you do? Maybe you're like Pastor John, just start saying, Jesus, Jesus. I mean, that's a form of prayer, I guess. Sorry, John, I had to do that right there. But you can say that. You can, but what do you do? What do you do when you're scared and it's dark? You can't see what's happening. You turn on a lamp. You turn the light on so that you can see and what happens. The darkness disappears and the light from the lamp brings peace and security and comfort. You know, I think about the purpose of a lighthouse in a storm. You got a ship that's sailing and there's a massive storm going on. They can't see any hope. And they see that lighthouse, that light spinning around. And what happens to those sailors? It brings peace and direction and comfort to their spirits and their soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is what God is telling us. And so I want to encourage you to go to God, pick up a Bible, dust it off, read through some Psalms every day or something. It's about midway through the Bible. But continue to go to God because God's got this. And he is good. And I believe that right now, like I said before, I woke up a little bit excited today with more hope than I've had before. That I believe that we're going to come out, the whole church all over the world is going to come out more stronger than we ever have before. But we have to stay close. And we have to give hope. And we have to go to God through prayer and his word. Because God's in the invitation business. We make invites all the time, and God is in the invitation business, and he's inviting us to invite others into this hope and into this life. 
And he's calling you and he's calling me and everyone around us right now to be that light, that hope in the darkness. And when the time comes, and I believe that God will let you know when, when the time comes, he's going to use you and remind you to make that simple invitation to come to Jesus. And that simple invitation is going to change their life now and for eternity. And it's easier than you think. I'm going to bring a friend of mine up uh, here on stage. I did this in week one. It's good to hear from other people that you've never seen before. Um, Actually, most people probably have seen this before. He's been getting a lot of love online. People talk about him all the time, every Sunday. But I want to bring up my friend Steve, who plays the drums. Give him some um, digital clapping right now and some, you know, for the two people in here. But I want to bring up Steve. And the reason why I want to bring up Steve is because I was thinking about him when I was writing this uh, message. But if you didn't know anything about Steve, no matter what's happening in the world around him, Steve is the same guy. And Steve is Mr. Positivity. Um, But this is Steve. Say hello, Steve. Good morning, everybody. Um, Steve, I know we were talking just the other day, but um, just to start off, so the people that don't know you, um, give us a little bit about yourself. So I'm uh, 39 years old. I uh, am an anesthesia technician at Creighton University Hospital. I uh, enjoy long walks along the beach and bicycling. <laughs> Wait. Can't go there right okay, now. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. Um, I have a wife, Cassie, who uh, you probably all know as well. And uh, I have three kids, Tommy, who's eight, and a set of twins, Jameson and Harrison, who are six. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been going to Relevant now for six years. Start off on the Guts team. Uh, which is set up and tear down, and did that for about a month, and then I opened the bag of worms and said, I uh, kind of play drums too. Kind of play the drums. Kind of play them. And uh, ever since then, I uh, get to play those. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Steve, you were telling me the other day just a little bit about your story. Would you share a little bit about your story um, with everybody listening? So, um, let's see. I was born and raised Catholic, and... uh, my mother passed when I was seven, so my father took us pretty much through Lutheran uh, church and everything, and uh, I just had, I had no connection with God, none at all, matter of fact, so, uh, and it just went downhill from there. So I went, moved to Minneapolis and went to music college up there, and I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to play drums and do the live shows and everything. I wanted the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle. And it just, it just kept tanking and tanking. And, you know, I, we'd play all these rooms and venues and everything, and I would be fulfilled, you know, just for that little second. But then afterwards, it, you'd hang out with the wrong crowd, and you were just completely empty inside, and it would just completely destroy you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I ended up meeting my wife, Cassie, and she came to one of our shows, and we ended up uh, getting rid of that lifestyle and moving to Jacksonville, Florida. She didn't like that lifestyle for you? <laughs> Not really, <laughs> but well, that's besides the point. <laughs> and uh, we ended up moving to Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, she was like, well, we need to go to a church. We need to meet people. And uh, so she literally drug me into a church, and uh, we met some, met some people, and uh, I became friends with a guy named Mark Albert, and uh, he was one of the invita- inviting pastors there. And, uh, you know, I liked him because he was real. He had tattoos. He was a police officer. But, you know, he went straight to it. He was like, you know, this is what you need to do. This is the lifestyle that you have to, you know, you need to wave all that aside. Mm-hmm. And then he introduced me to Rob Gover, who said, you can actually play drums in church. Mm. You know, because in Catholic and Lutheran, all you do is play organ. And that's all you heard was the pipe organ. (laughs) We have an organ here. uh, Yeah, he ain't too bad. (laughs) (laughs) And so I I never heard of drums in church. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I want this. I want this. And it just made my heart grow ten times the size. Yeah, yeah. So what was it that kind of finally put you um, Sorry, across no, the line of faith. I have no cards. No cards. Because my wife says you ramble too much. <laughs> That's okay. But what brought you to the point where you realized, I need to follow Jesus now. I need to put my faith in him. What was it that brought you to that point? 
the point was he gave me hope mm -hmm. to be a, an entirely different person because I was I was so torn up inside I was I was going down the wrong path mm -hmm. I was trying drugs I was drinking I was smoking uh, yeah I was did everything that that the devil wanted you to do mm -hmm. and once God gave me and showed me this, you know, I was drumming for a room of anywhere from 100 to 250 people. And we were doing that, you know, four or five nights a week. And then you'd, uh, you'd go home and just, I mean, you were living all night, sleep during the day. Mm -hmm. And I would be on a high for like maybe, you know, a couple hours, mm -hmm. but then I'd be automatically empty inside. And when God put me, put this in front of me and put it on stage, I, was, I mean, it, it was a whole different story. I was on a high all day, all night. I mean, it was, it was awesome. I was meeting new friends. People would call me. They invest in me, and they were, it was great. It was the best thing, yeah. you know, and wherever, you know, wherever darkness is, you know, the, wherever the Holy Spirit was inside of me, and whenever he was inside of me, darkness could not be there, and I love that, and I was like, I'm totally going to live for Jesus now. Yeah, because when you put your faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes in and takes residence in you, and oh, you felt that, yeah. and you knew he was there. Oh, and that's, I mean, it gave me a whole different energy. Before I was just playing, you know, just playing. And then now it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm playing drums for the King of Kings, the guy on the highest throne above. Mm, that's you right. know, that is, how can I not give my best? That's right. That's awesome, man. So you mentioned uh, a, a couple minutes ago that you work in the medical field, and I know, and the, one of the reasons why I brought you up here is creating a message around how to invite people in, how to, how to have those conversations, how do you get people into that kind of conversation. I started thinking, you know what, instead of writing an entire message about just that, why don't we just bring up Steve, who is the best example of what it looks like to invite someone. He's not, maybe not the best example, but you're pretty up there. No. Um, but you've invited a lot of people. Um, and, and, but what does that look like? Because people ask, I don't know how to do that. How do, you, how do you just invite people so much? And why? I think uh, one word is woo. Woo. Which gallops. You and, you and I. Winning others up. over, top five talent yeah. thing. Yeah. So there's a, once you get, uh, once you go on and you uh, go through the whole orientation process at Relevant, you go through uh, what's called the Gallup's Strength Finder. And then you find out what your, is it top five or top mm -hmm. 10? Top five. Top five. And of course, I think woo is in my top one. Means very people-y. Yeah. Very, very people, -y. people -y. And you so, use that in your yeah. workplace and stuff. So you love to talk to people. I love, and I, I, I knew that. Everybody knew that. You love to talk to people. I love to find out what their favorite restaurant is, their favorite food, uh, favorite beer, favorite, you know, music. And then once I, you know, music was my end for me. Because once I found that out, I could put my foot in the mm -hmm. pool and kind of be like, jump all over you and be your friend. And... Uh, <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, no, here we go. <laughs> that was not on the note that card, not was right. it? I don't see it right there. <laughs> so, so you're at work and you're inviting people. How do you yeah. do that? So, I, you know, I always became, once I found that out is I, you know, became friends with them. And I always like, you know, I always wanted to be the positive person. Mm -hmm. And once I became friends with them, it was, I wanted them to experience my positivity. I wanted to experience the love and joy that, that I had for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so that was my way of being like, well, dude, I play drums at church. You know, come on, check us out. Yeah. That was my way to get them to the door. Yeah. I'll meet you at the door. We'll go down, have coffee, donuts, everything like that, and sit down, enjoy the deal, and then we'll go to Village Inn or yeah. Starbucks afterwards. That's awesome. And chat about how it was. And then, you know, the couple people end up coming time after time. And, you know, it was, that was my way of, you know, getting them in there because I wanted them to experience that happiness. Like, what does he have that, that makes him so joyful and happy? Mm -hmm. And what, how do I experience that? Yeah. I was like, well, come check it out. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and I asked you this question the other day. Why do, you, why do you specifically invite? Now, you've kind of mentioned that because I want them to, to have the experience of joy and stuff. But you told me something else. And what was, what was that reason? I want all my friends to be with me in heaven. Because I think this is just, this is the pregame. Yeah. You know, this is the, that's the biggest party in the world up there. Yeah. And this is, this is all just a show, you know? Yeah. And that's, that up there is the reason why my heart is 10 times the size. Yeah, that's awesome. And I want everybody to be up there. Yeah. And so if there's people who are watching today and you had one thing to say um, that 
you're like, hey, these people, are, they've been considering God. They're like, I don't know if I want to do this or not. What would you, what would you tell them? Why not? I mean, why not? Mm-hmm. There's, there's absolutely, there should be nothing holding you back at all. Yeah. You know, whether it's time. I mean, I got a wife and three kids. I ain't got time. Uh, money. I got a wife and three kids. I don't have money either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have drums, She's going to kill me for yeah, that. You have drums, though. Uh, yeah, I do. A <laughs> no. couple of drum sets. Yeah. Uh, guilt. I mean, my whole history was, was all guilt, doing, doing the whole lifestyle. And I was you know, ashamed of everything. But God was like, we'll just wipe all that clean and we'll start over. Yeah. You're going to have the best life ever, buddy. Yeah, yeah. that's and, awesome. You know, I, I had a lifestyle full of sin. Mm-hmm. So my suggestion is give it, give it one week. Mm-hmm. Give it one week, go all in. Mm-hmm. Give God everything that you possibly have. I mean, my, how I do it is I just, you know, first thing in the morning, I get up super early, make my coffee, and I, it takes me 25 minutes to get from my house to Creighton Hospital. So that's enough time to listen to, I listen to a podcast every morning, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird because it's, it's Duck Dynasty, the guys of Duck Dynasty Strange, do one. But yeah, probably good. It's a really good one. Yeah. And uh, they talk about God and everything. And my, you know, I don't have much knowledge, you know, about the Bible. And so that's why I always keep, you know, it's, it's a hunger that I keep feeding after. Just is, preparing is wanting, yourself, is bringing it in. Because yeah. I know a lot of people's fear is, oh, well, I don't, I don't know much about the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. Either do I. Yeah. This, that's, that's what, you know, what this you for. learn all this. Yeah. So, I, yeah. you know, I listen to a podcast on the way. That's 25 minutes. And then it takes me about an hour, two hours to, to set up the ORs for, for the day. Mm-hmm. So I have my AirPods in and I'm setting up rooms, listening to more podcasts. And that's, that builds me up and makes me, the, you know, it's my energy drink for the day. Yeah. And I would say it's, it's probably as you do that, as you're listening to God's word, as you're listening to those podcasts, people talking about, um, just God and what's going on in the world, but you're able to fill your mind with truth and it probably ignites your own faith that way. Oh, yeah. It gives you the power to go in and make those invites to people. Absolutely. Yeah. Another thing I would say is surround yourself with, with good people mm-hmm. is, you know, because I did, I hung out with a bad, bad crowd and it, you know, people like that will turn you that like, especially at the beginning, you know, I know Jesus hung out with, you know, the yep. bad crowd to do yep. that, but you know, at the beginning, Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, Steve. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, everybody give Steve some more online love. Um, we love Steve. Steve, thank, thank you. you so much for coming up here. All right. Well, as we come in for a landing, the reason why I brought Steve up here today is because there is no perfect way to invite others into what we have, into the hope in Jesus. There's no perfect way. It's simple. You stay close to them. You give hope to them. And you go to God. Another way that you can use this impact list is bring these people to God. But right now, I just want to ask the church to stay with me to the very end. And I want you to just begin praying because I'm going to talk to people who are streaming today for the first time, people who maybe have been watching for a few weeks, maybe you've been watching and, and visiting here for six months, whatever. I want to talk to you for a moment. But I want us to begin praying uh, for these people. But I want to ask you a question. If you don't know God, if you're not a follower of Jesus, maybe you need to come back, you've kind of drifted away, maybe you don't know where you're at in all this. Do you know that you can put your faith in Jesus right now, right here, wherever you are? You can do that. And so I'd ask the same question that Steve asked. If you've not done that, but you want to, maybe you don't, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? And it's easy. And Paul says in the book of Romans that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that he's raised from the dead, that you'll be saved. And at that point, just like happened to Steve, Holy Spirit comes within you. And if that's you, if you want to make that decision today, I just want to ask that you pray with, right where you are, just pray with me this, this thing. But ask God, God, I realize I need you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to pay for my sins. Jesus, today, come into my life. Today, I put my faith in you. And Holy Spirit, direct my life. 
I follow you with all of my heart. It's that simple. And if you prayed that today, here's what happened. Holy Spirit takes up residence within you. Your sins have been forgiven. You're going to be able to spend eternity with God starting today. And if you've made that decision, will you just let us know by writing on, typing in there that I put my faith in Jesus today. Let us know somehow that you've made that decision today. We'd love to follow up with you. But for Relevant and everyone listening, as we close out this series, I, w- I want to ask that you just stand up right wherever you are. Just stand up right wherever you are. Because I have a prayer for all of us as we go about our weeks and our days and our months. And, and just put your arms out like this. And I want to pray a prayer of commissioning over you. And it's this. Words from Jesus. You. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.